All right, we're gonna start with some warm-up activities here. What I want you to do is take these two lines and figure out the slope of the different lines. I'll um, stop the video and give you a moment, but just a little hint is what you wanna do is find two points where the line passes through and determine the slope from one point to the other. And so do that for both the blue line and the red line. All right, the blue line, you can start at this point right here. We would go up one, two, three, and back one, two. So our, our um, slope for the blue line is equal to three over a negative two. And then do the same thing for the red line. From this point to this point, you would go up one, two, three, four. So that would be our rise and our run would be one, two, three. So the second slope for the red line was the rise of one, two, three, four, and the run of one, two, three. So the slope here is going to be a positive four thirds. Okay, that's just a quick review of taking a line and finding its slope. Notice that it goes with our um, trend of how the slopes run. The red line um, is going from the bottom left to the up right, so this would be a positive slope. Let's just check and make sure that was the slope for the red line was a positive four thirds. For the blue line, it's going from the up left to the bottom right, so that's a negative slope. And notice that we did get a um, negative slope for the blue line. All right, the next thing, um, this continues to be review and it will go into the new lesson today. Find the slope of the line containing the given points. And so we'll just pause the video right here if you would figure out the slope of the line um, for A and also for B. Okay, hopefully you've already figured this out, but for the first slope, the change in y is four minus one, so our rise is going to be three, and then the change in x is three minus a negative two, or three plus two, which is five. So the, the slope for um, the first two points, the line that passes through those two points would be three, five, and then for the second order pair, seven uh, minus a negative four, was seven plus four or 11 for the rise, and then five minus zero or five for the run. All right, the last section in review is to solve for y in terms of x. Solve for y in terms of x. Right now, the um, format here is what we call the general equation of the line. You have both x and y on the same side, equal to a constant. So what you wanna do here is subtract six x, Well, it's not going to let me do it. Subtract 6x from both sides, minus 6x, and minus 6x, 
and then on the left side we've got 3y is equal to a negative 6x plus 12. And then the last step um, for this first one would be to divide 3 by 3. And um, I'm just going to, let me do it with a pen. If you would divide here by 3, 3y divided by 3 will just be y and negative 6x divided by 3. Sorry, this is hard to write with. And 12 divided by 3. <laughs> um, final equation um, will be y is equal to a negative 2x plus 4. All right, and then you're going to be able to take this form of the equation, and notice here we've got the slope will be negative 2. So the rise over the run would be negative 2 over 1, and this, this number right here is where the line crosses the y-axis. So you're going to be able to solve, you'll be able to graph that line. And then do the same thing for, for b. This time, keep the 4y, negative 4y on the left. And this time you should you want to subtract the 12x. So if I just take this 12x right here and subtract it from both sides, I'll get 4y is equal to negative 12x minus 10. And then the last step will be to divide through by a negative 4. So I'll get y is equal to um, negative 12 divided by negative 4 will be 3x plus 10 over 4, 10 over 4 will reduce to um, 5 halves. And so there will be my final answer for, for letter B. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to the lesson for today. Those three concepts that we did in the, in the um, review exercises will help us as we, we go through here. In this lesson, we're going to work on writing equations of lines. And there are three methods for doing that and it will depend on what you are given in the problem. So if you'll write down um, the first method is number one given the slope m and the y-intercept b. So when you are given y and b you should be able to substitute it into the equation for m here and b here. So here would be the most basic letter a and you would be able to substitute it into the equation of y equals mx plus b And you would, um, you would write y is equal to 12x <coughs> plus 5. And that's all you have to do. That's your answer right there. y is equal to 12x. Let me move it up here. There's the equation. Given that the slope is 12 and the y-intercept is, is 5, you would just have that equation right there. And that would be your final answer. Now in B right here, it's kind of similar. Um, but in this one, you'll have to figure out what your y-intercept is and then also what your slope is. So for letter B, we're going to be solving for M and B. Okay, the slope and the y-intercept are the two items we are looking for. Um, you can start with either one. We'll start with the slope. And then just like with number letter A right here, as long as you know the M and the B, you just substitute it in to the format of Y equals MX plus B and you have your equation of your line. So actually here's the Y intercept right here. If this is the Y axis, this red line goes through the Y axis at a negative three. So that's how easy it is to figure out your B. Then your M or your slope will go, we're going to go from this point here to this point here. So we're going to go from a negative three, we're going to go up one, two, three, four units up. So my rise is going to be four units. And then from here you run one, two, three. So my slope will be four. Let's see if I can make a 
four. Ah, that's pretty good. Four thirds. And remember again, I got that from starting at my Y intercept and then I'm gonna rise and run to the next point on, a gri on the grid. One, two, three, four, and run one, two, three. Both the rise and the run were positive. I can also tell that this is a positive line right here. Last step, just like I did for A, is to substitute it into the equation of y equals mx plus b. We'll always have a y, and it will always will most likely have an x. And so when I have the, the slope that is what we figured out was 4 thirds, so y is equal to 4 thirds x minus 3. And I have once again written the equation of the line. So here's method one. The first method is if you can, if you know or if you can figure out the slope and the y-intercept. All you have to do is label M, label B, and substitute it into the equation of a line. Okay, the second method is given the slope, so this time we're given M, but we're not given the um, y-intercept. We are just given a point, x of 1, y sub 1. You're going to use this equation right here. This is called the point-slope equation. So use the point-slope equation, and um, you still are going to use substitution where you will substitute M in here, the value for M here, and then the ordered pair x1, y1 into both of these places. This y and this x will stay as is, this first two. So I'm going to do the, um, the work here. Let me see if I can get a text box going. Yep. Here's the, this first one right here. Here's the slope is negative one half, and the point is one two. So this is how you set it up: y minus y one, which is two right here. That's the one y one. Y minus two is equal to m, which is a negative one half times x minus x one. So you see how I did that right there? I substituted into, this is the equation that I'm using. I substituted x1 and y1 in here and here. And here's where they were. Here was the y sub 1, went here. Here's the x of 1, and it went here. And then here's the slope. And the slope went right here. Right, so you did a lot of substitution. And then the next thing is you want to um, add two to both sides because you still want to solve for y, so keep your y on the left side, add two to both sides, and then go through and distribute the negative one half to both of um, the items in the parentheses. So I'm gonna switch it back over to this one, solving, and y is going to equal a negative, negative one half x plus one half plus two. Okay, and the way that I got that, I took this negative two right here and I added two to both sides. That way I only have y on the left and I have a positive two over here and then I distributed a negative one half times x, that's where I got the negative one half x here, and then negative one half times negative one, and that's how I got the positive two. And then the last step will be, I have y is equal to a negative one half x plus two and one half, which is actually three halves. And I'll just leave it like that. Okay, and then you can do the same thing with this one right here, um, the picture. I just moved it. Okay, leave it right there. Um, do the same thing, and this time I have two ordered pairs, notice. Um, my two ordered pairs right here, the um, point is, oh, I think actually 
I can do the slope. I can figure out the slope, which is going to be up one, two, three, four. Looks like it's a rise of five. And then run one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like it's just one over one. So the slope is one. And then the ordered pair that I'm going to use is um, negative five, positive two. Negative five, positive two. Okay, so I figured out those two, just like I did up here in this problem, this problem in A, I figured these two items out by, by using it in the graph. And then I'm going to show you how you substitute that in again. You'll substitute it into the um, point slope formula and you'll go y minus 2 is equal to 1 times x minus 5 or plus 5. Then notice I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Really that slope is 1 so it will just be x plus 5 plus 2 or x plus 7. So my final, um, final equation of the line is right here, y is equal to x plus 7. The third method for writing an equation of a line is when you're given two ordered pairs. Notice no slope, no, um, no picture, all we're given is two ordered pairs. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the formula um, for slope. You're going to have to figure out the slope, and then you go back to the point slope method. So here's a problem writing equation of the line that passes through these two points. We need to figure out the slope first, and the numerator will be negative 8 minus 4. And the denominator, so this will be the numerator, that's where we get a negative 12. And the denominator will be um, negative 6 minus 2. It'll be negative 12 over negative 8. And then just reduce that fraction, and it would be 3 over 2. 3 halves. 4 goes into 12 3 times, and 4 goes into 8 2 times. So by using um, the, the slope formula, I'm able to figure out my slope. And from here, um, I, can take, I can use the point slope formula again, and I can take either point. I'm just going to use the 2, 4 and plug it into the equation, um, point slope equation. So y minus y sub 2, which was y sub 1, which was 4, is equal to the slope times x minus 2. So notice right here, I use point slope again, y minus y sub 1. I got that right here from the 4. Let me highlight them. I use the 4 right here and then equals the slope, or m, I figured that out right here, min, um, times x minus x of 1 was 2. Notice the only thing that I didn't use was this point right here. You don't have to use both of them because all I need is 1.24 and 1 slope. And then the last thing you do is you just simplify everything here y is equal to 3 halves x minus 3 times 2 is 6 divided by 2 is 3 plus 4 because I needed to add this 4. Final equation y is equal to 3 halves x plus 1 and I've written the equation of the line again. And this right here is my final answer equation of the line. 
Okay, the last thing that I wanted to um, show you is something called direct variation, and it's actually still using the equation of a line, but write down these two equations here. The, the format for it is y over x is equal to k. y over x is equal to k. It's called direct variation. And then notice I can transform this equation right here. If I multiply both sides of the equation by x, um, multiply the, the left side by x, the x's cancel and I just have y. Multiply the right side by x and you get kx. And so I'm supposed to, um, the directions say the values of x and y are varying directly. And one pair of values for x and y are given. Write an equation that relates the variables. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate number one first. And so all you're going to do is take this first, this first equation, we're going to solve for k. And so it says that y divided by x is equal to k. Therefore, k is equal to 2. Because 6 divided by 3 is the constant, or k. Then I'm going to take the second form, and I'm going to substitute the constant in here. And my final equation for direct variation for this particular problem y is equal to 2x because once I solve for k then I'm going to su substitute it back in here my apologies I've got a virus on my computer so that thing keeps popping up okay let me show you one more of these and you'll have a couple of these on your assignment today um, for this one y divided by x would be 7 over negative 5 and that's equal to k and then we substitute that value for k into the second equation y is equal to 7 over negative 5x. And that's all you have to do is come up with a final um, equation where y is equal to um, mx and y is equal to mx right there. All right, I've tried to give you an example of each type. Now I will be available um, to you to help you with your assignment. But this way, I only have to teach the lesson one time, and everybody can watch it um, at, at the pace that you are going. And here is the assignment that I need you to do, um, page 90, numbers 5 through 25 all. And you may begin working on that now, and I'm available to answer any questions that you have.